Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. So, take a look at group one on the left and group two on the right. Group one just went through eight weeks of full body training without creatine, and group two took creatine during those eight weeks. And look at the difference in the drop in myostatin from group one and group two. Everything else equal, the group that took creatine had almost double the amount of myostatin reduction compared to group one. Anyway, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday where we talk about anything related to myostatin. Quick recap for those who are new, myostatin is just a protein that your body makes that stops muscle growth, right? It's your biggest enemy as a bodybuilder or anyone who's just trying to put on some muscle. For as long as you train, your biggest goal will always be keeping this gene downregulated, which is why animals and humans who are lacking the myostatin gene look like fucking brawly without any form of training or any help from anabolic steroids. Another example of how bad myostatin is, whenever you immobilize your leg, the reason why your leg shrinks is because myostatin goes up. Whenever people have cancer or HIV and are wasting away, the reason why they lose so much muscle is because, once again, their myostatin gene gets upregulated and their myostatin levels go up. The reason why astronauts lose muscle mass when they go into space is because again once you go into space and there's no gravity your levels of myostatin go through the roof causing you to lose muscle mass and if you watch my previous video on phyllostatin the reason why mouse number two at the bottom looks like a steroided version of mouse number one is simply because it's lacking the myostatin gene and it was genetically engineered to overproduce phyllostatin which is obviously a protein that blocks the effects of myostatin same comparison here, look at the legs, the quad development of mouse 1 versus mouse 2. Here's another picture of the same mice side by side. And here's the famous monkey that was injected with phyllostatin. Look at the difference in just three months. That's his leg, by the way. And of course, if you watch the other video on the boy from Vietnam, 10-year-old boy who has a myostatin deficiency and looks bigger than most natural bodybuilders at age fucking 25. So as you can clearly see, as I've been saying year after year, the myostatin pathway is far more important and far more anabolic than the testosterone pathway or any other muscle building pathway in the human body. Now, a common misconception out there is, do natties have to worry about myostatin? Absolutely. As one of the biggest transcription factors that's involved in protein synthesis in muscle growth is the mighty gene, right? Accurin 1. And right after a workout, the correlation between the amount of muscle you're going to put on and the activity of the Accurin 1 gene is 0.99. So 99% of the variance between the amount of muscle different people put on, and that includes animals as well, is due to this transcription factor here. And sure enough, myostatin blocks this transcription factor. So you cannot escape myostatin. As you can see here, once again, Correlation is 0.99. That is the highest correlation that we've seen in all of hypertrophy research. Nothing has a higher correlation in this. And obviously, there's also causation because that's a prerequisite for DNA transcription. But anyway, several studies have also pointed out how important myostatin downregulation is for maximum muscle growth. And in fact, one of the reasons why old women, well, the majority of old women have a hard time putting on muscle is because... After training, they have a very, very hard time lowering myostatin. Remember, every time you go to the gym, every time you train, you lower myostatin. And the more you're able to lower myostatin, the more gains you make over time. As you can see, young men, huge drop in myostatin, which obviously explains why it's so easy for young people to put on muscle. Young women, decent drop. Old men, decent drop. Old women, not so much. And that's why sarcopenia affects old women a lot harsher uh, than older men. Even in young women, the reason why young women don't put on as much muscle as men, it's not just because of testosterone, it's also because of myostatin. As you can see here, women don't downregulate myostatin anywhere as close as men do, even if they do the exact same workout. So they'll still build muscle, but it's much harder compared to men simply because they have a hard time increasing phyllostatin after training a hard time lowering myostatin and to make it worse women actually have double the amount of active n2b which is the myostatin receptor um they have double the activity of that receptor compared to men 
And as I mentioned last time, the reason why bodybuilders even on steroids look like myostatin freaks is simply because anabolic steroids increase phyllostatin, which obviously keeps myostatin active in A at bay. So now you guys see why the World Anti-Doping Agency does not allow any unnatural means of lowering myostatin during competition, in and out of competition. So anything that blocks the active N2B receptor is banned, except for creatine. So I already explained to you guys that the number one way to lower myostatin is obviously lift weights, right? It's the number one myostatin blocker out there. Simply going to the gym and training with enough volume. Nothing lowers myostatin more than training. The only downside is, as mentioned before, is that the biggest drop in myostatin peaks at about eight hours. After that, myostatin starts to slowly go back to baseline. So biggest drop at eight hours starts to go back towards baseline, which is one of the main reasons why protein synthesis stays maximally elevated for only about 24 hours for the average lifter. Myostatin goes right back to fucking your shit up. Now you see why nucleus overload is so powerful. You're constantly keeping myostatin at low levels. Now back to the study. Again, group one trained without creatine. Group two took creatine. One week of 20 grams per day, followed by about five grams maintenance. That's what most studies have found to be the effective dose. And sure enough, look at the huge drop in myostatin that we've seen in group two. And as you can expect, group two also put on more muscle and also gain more strength. So the effects of creatine are not just from allowing you to do more reps or pulling water into the muscle or increasing IGF-1 and satellite cells, which obviously creatine does all those things. But one of the main effects of creatine is, again, lowering myostatin by a significant amount, right? Which is why, even though you guys know I'm not big on supplements, that's one of the few supplements that I actually recommend because there's been... Hundreds, I think there's over 400 studies on creatine alone. It's time tested, it's proven, it's very cheap, it's natural. Your body makes creatine, you can get it from foods, and it has so many effects on hypertrophy and your performance in the gym. Now, if you don't want to supplement with creatine for whatever reason, you can always get it from foods. Just remember, beef has a lot of creatine, you only need about five grams per day, so. Eating one to two pounds of beef will give you that easily. And don't forget, your body already makes about one or two grams of creatine a day. Pork also has creatine. Uh, fish, especially herring and uh, salmon, has a ton of creatine. So once again, that's why creatine is so cheap. That's why it's so easy to get. And that's why water can't really ban it, right? Even though it's so uh, time-tested and proven. It's because people would just get it from foods. So it's up to you guys. You can supplement with creatine monohydrate or you can just try to get it from food. If you're vegan, now you kind of fuck, right? Because creatine is mainly found in animal muscle. I mean, it makes sense. Creatine mainly helps with ATP regeneration. So you're not going to find a lot of it in plants. In fact, I think you have to eat like uh, five to 600 pounds of cranberries just to get five grams of creatine. I mean, just let that sink in, right? 600 pounds of cranberries, which is, as far as I know, the only... Uh, non-animal food that has creatine that has enough creatine and you have to eat 600 pounds of that just to get five grams of creatine so if you're a power lifter that's pretty much like your one rep max on like the deadlift for your squat or something you have to eat that every day from cranberries just to get five grams of creatine right so again that's why vegans have lower levels of muscle creatine every single time their muscles are analyzed so if you're vegan try to get your creatine from supplements obviously make sure it's, it's from a vegan company or that it's not extracted from animal products but for the rest of us again you can just get it from supplements or foods all right guys hope this video helps i might make another one on uh the other natural myostatin blockers that are out there see you in the comment section all right guys don't forget to like or share the video subscribe and hit the bell and buy my hsp nucleus of a little training program it's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth it includes full body workouts, splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. 
or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.